So I'm going to be talking about some sort of a palliative care 101 today and uh, just getting everybody talking the same language in palliative care. Just to get the palliative care juices going, I'm going to have a pre-presentation quiz. How are you going to die? How are you planning on dying? This is what the insurance company tells you, isn't it? You know, how long are you going to live? So is it going to be a base jumping accident on your 97th birthday? Or are you going to die suddenly of a heart attack? Cancer, progressive organ failure, or slow dwindling? Which one of those do you think it's going to be? You don't need to answer, but uh, just to start thinking about it. And, I, and, I'll, and I'll let you know which one's most likely for you later on. So just start thinking about that. So this is a little quiz about advanced care planning. And um, I want people to raise their hands when I ask them questions. Have you? assigned an enduring power of attorney. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Good, three. So what is an enduring power of attorney? If I drive home today and I get hit by a truck and I uh, uh, have a serious injury and my wife needs to access funds to uh, help get me better, she's got my power of attorney. So power of attorney is all about money and funds when you are alive. Have you assigned your enduring power attorney and created a representation agreement nine? An RA9 is if I'm driving home in a truck and I get hit by a snowplow today and I end up on the in, in intensive care on a ventilator, my wife has the, uh, my, an RA9. So she, she can say, nah, pull the plug. She can, she can actually make medical decisions about me when I, when I am alive. And she has the power to do that because she has an RA9. Have you assigned your enduring power of attorney, created an RA9, and had a discussion with your representative about advanced care planning? There's only two people in the room. OK. And that was interesting, because we actually had this discussion. And, and we, we talked about donating organs. And, and I said to my wife, of course, we'll donate, all donate our organs. She said, no, you're not going to have my eyes. I've been married for 30 years, and they had that conversation. And I didn't know that she didn't want her eyes donated. So, you might surprise you if you choose that. Or, do you have an abiding belief that you're immortal? You don't need to talk about this, okay? So anybody who says no to that question, you need to do those things. And then during power of attorney, an RA9, and you need a will as well, by the way, and you need to talk to your representative. So that should be basic for everybody. So when should palliative, the palliative care um, approach start? Do you think it should be a, a prenatal registration as life is a terminal disease? And by the way, it's sexually transmitted as well, so, so watch out. Or should we do it at the time of a life-limiting diagnosis when the disease-modifying approach have been exhausted? Or when the patient's booked into pathology outpatients, circling the plug hole or whatever else you want to call it? We'll be talking about this later on, but start thinking about that.